Oh, wait, Carol Vorderman's <laughs> been looking <laughs> at the maths of the mundane. Did you know this? Mm. The quite brilliant calculations we make in our everyday lives without knowing it. Today, uh, wrapping presents. Whatever geometrical aptitude is required for this essential task, I completely lack it. So I, for one, am watching with interest. Christmas is the time for giving, but in order to do that, we have to buy, wrap, stick and stamp a ridiculous amount of paper. For instance, in the run-up to the Yuletide, the Royal Mail delivers 150 million Christmas cards every day. And we will use 83 square kilometres of wrapping paper to give our gifts. That is enough to gift wrap Guernsey. Unless you're Ebenezer Scrooge, wrapping Christmas presents is something you're probably quite familiar with. But calculating how much two-dimensional paper is needed to wrap a three-dimensional object is more of a burden on our brains than we can imagine. But surprisingly, a lot of us are actually rather good at it. Three pieces of paper to choose from. Will our wrapping contestants choose the right one and do it at speed? The time starts now. Um, she's gone for the right piece of paper. <laughs> right for the paper. Did you just swear? No. Oh. 19.4. <laughs> 32 seconds. And I can still see the box. It was the right bit of paper as well. 21 seconds. And look at that, that's not bad. <laughs> OK, so we might not be great when it comes to wrapping quickly, but nearly everyone picked the right size piece of paper. High five. Unlike calculators, we can unwrap shapes mentally to estimate an object's total surface area. Then our brains convert the same dimensions into a single sheet of paper. Good, but we're not perfect. So can maths help us to wrap presents any better? Well, there are two problems we have to tackle here. Firstly, the smallest amount of paper needed to wrap a box like this would be its cross pattern, its net. But to cut this out of a roll of paper would give you an awful lot of wastage. And to sellotape up each side and each edge would waste an awful lot of tape. So, finding a way of wrapping a present while cutting down on paper and on tape is a lot harder than it first appears. But guess what? Maths has the answer. Mathematician Sara Santos from the Royal Institution has devised a mathematical method for wrapping a present. I was looking into three things um, to minimise the amount of paper used, to use the least amount of sellotape, and to match the pattern where the paper meets, because I really like nicely wrapped presents. Now, you have wrapped something beautifully here. I have to say, I was deeply impressed with this. And here you've got all the stripes matching up. Can you see this? It's fantastic. OK, so how is it done? Well, here is Sarah's guide to wrapping a square-shaped present. First, measure the diagonal of your present's largest side. Then add this to one and a half times the present's height. Once you have an answer, use it to cut out a perfect square of paper. Now place the present diagonally in the centre and bring in all four corners. Fold in the tabs and place a bow on the top. Ta-ta! Oh. <laughs> the box must be square to make the pattern match perfectly, but even on rectangles, Sarah's mathematical method can still help you use less paper than the conventional way. Brilliant. Right, let's see what the real present experts think of it. Are you ready? Yes! On your marks, get set, wrap! <laughs> so there you have it. Our brains are remarkably good at calculating surface areas and wrapping three-dimensional objects. But remember, if you want to do your bit for the environment this Christmas, you might want to use our magic mathematical formula. Have a good Christmas. And these are the maths of life. Yeah! Great.